Once upon a time, ladies and gentlemen, different institutions believed in different things. Take universities. We had Royalist Oxford, we had Parliamentarian Cambridge. Later came UCL, the godless college in Gower Street. King's College London was a Tory response. As 2023 began, our graduates received their New Year alumni magazines, featuring refreshingly identical opinions on sustainability, migration, decolonization. Like in early East Germany, private companies still exist, but they increasingly understand that their role too is to support the state and its ideology. So a new label on Nescafe jars reminds instant coffee drinkers to celebrate gender diversity. The chief executive of KLM Airlines asks people to take fewer flights for the sake of net zero. Every major institution in this country now has virtually the same opinion. This is a groupthink so ubiquitous that we forget how recent the development is. In AJP Taylor's famous refrain, until August 1914, a sensible law-abiding Englishman could pass through life and hardly notice the existence of the state beyond the post office and the policeman. Lenin understood that a totalitarian society requires the politicization of everything. In his book, Cobra the Dread, Martin Amis recounts how a political opponent said of Vladimir Ilyich that he could not deal with a man who, even in his sleep, dreams of nothing but revolution. Amis observed, that is what they want, the steely ones, the politicization of sleep. They want per politics to be permanent and circumambient. My friends, they will never leave you alone. But isn't the odd thing that the post-1960s liberal settlement was surely supposed to be about maximizing freedoms of all kinds? However, in his book, Conservatism, A Rediscovery, Yoram Hazoni described a dance of liberalism and Marxism. Liberalism fundamentally lacks the language to resist Marxist demands. So, the liberal is asked, if all are free and equal, why, for example, can't anyone migrate to this country? The answer depends on recourse to conservative terms, liberals discarded. Nation, borders, common sense. So, embarrassed by unfreedom and inequality, liberals keep caving in to Marxist demands. This year, the Marxists came calling at the Wellcome Trust, previously the world's leading biomedical research foundation, which has discovered its true purpose is in fact campaigning for the cancellation of its own collections. What words did the liberals there have with which to resist? Tradition? Duty? Lost. Across the Anglosphere, left liberalism has turned out to be something of a Marxist gateway drug. Sir Roger Scruton saw that the contradictory nature of the socialist utopias is one explanation of the violence involved in the attempt to impose them. It takes infinite force, he said, to make people do what is impossible. 
And as the demands of left liberalism itself, like open borders, become divorced from reality, the imposition of, a pro of the program on a restive population must become draconian. Although the PREVENT program was established to address the threat of Islamist terrorism, some left liberal bureaucrats seem to have realized that drawing attention to some of the results of mass migration may not have been in their political interests. Instead, the extremism the program was established to prevent turned out also to include, by implication, a failure to subscribe to left liberal beliefs. It is now public knowledge that, like some absurdist Poundland Stasi, prevent monitored a cohort of social media users it turned actively patriotic and proud, and put Jacob Rees-Mogg on a list. This is a direct attack on democracy. A country that suppresses people who are proud of it, leaving space only for those who traduce it will surely not last long. So my daughter's primary school has decided that Guy Fawkes Night is called Autumn Fireworks Night, despite, and partly I suspect, in, re in reaction to Brexit, an historic severing of a people from its traditions is underway. The bureaucracy targets social traditions, which, as Scruton put it, exist because they enable a society to reproduce itself. Conservatives stand for its preservation. What is certain is that this left liberal settlement will fail. We must ensure that it is replaced by a return to the goodness of our traditions, not a continued descent into the dark. It is the job of conservatives to return to the light of that heritage. Today, though, British conservatism in power is merely a brand of liberalism known in practice as simply drift. Thank you. Thank you. While the institutions of the new consensus, like open borders, have failed and are producing growing fear, the institutions that have helped preserve our moderation Parliament, common law, monarchy, the sovereign nation are ancient and rooted in Judeo-Christian thought. The good news is that Anglosphere conservatism has been here, has been renewed before. At American independence, the Articles of Confederation mandated all powers be vested in a single assembly, a so-called rational break from British tradition that pushed America towards chaos. Beginning at the Constitutional Convention 11 years later, Washington re-founded the nation on traditional English principles, common law, jury trial, a bicameral legislature. Britons need now to go through our own process of rediscovery. We have restored our sovereignty through Brexit, but not yet our constitutional traditional freedoms, including to speak, though I know Toby is hard at work on that, and on which Britain's achievements depended. The decisions of the bureaucrats behind PREVENT suggest Scruton was right when he said, left-wing politics has discarded the revolutionary paradigm advanced by the new left in favor of bureaucratic routines promoted by legislation, committees, and government commissions. My colleague Fred de Fossard spoke eloquently yesterday of this bureaucracy's digging in to keep us tied to an EU system that is bringing European prosperity growth to an end. Now, an observation. Over the last generation, British democracy has become increasingly removed from control by the electorate, or the demos, 
with decision-making ability taken from the people they elect and placed in the hands of so-called experts, largely civil servants and quangocrats who have in turn developed means to avoid answering to the people's elected representatives for their actions. The system that is replacing democracy in our country is, I suggest, best called cosmetic democracy. In this system, the people are permitted to elect leaders, but the blob increasingly wants these leaders only to serve as performing frontmen, expected to style the policies that emerge as conservative. The civil service often tries to treat elected ministers as merely one of a number of advisory stakeholder groups whose opinions do need to be taken into account. This has been achieved through a succession of so-called reforms which have cemented a vast informational advantage, prevented any substantive control by elected ministers over which civil servants work for them, and normalised the sock puppet funding by the state of left-wing NGOs whose purpose is to campaign against the policies of those same ministers. This creates what Amos Senior, Sir Kingsley, called the relativist echo chamber of modern British public life. But I believe it does something more dangerous because I think it is beginning to tell the British people that democracy is something of a fool's errand. When this is pointed out, the protest is always that conservatives wish to politicize the civil service, but that is untrue. Conservatives wish to live in a functioning democracy, one that might involve the demos. I think that the lesson of the last five years is that when British people the British people pull the lever of the machine in an election, they find that that machine is broken. And when they object to being deprived of their democratic birthright, they are accused of base populism. They are now also monitored by government programs. They are put on lists. The left is on the way to ensuring that whatever the election result, it sticks around. This is behind many of our society's current malfunctions. One of the most urgent examples is continuing mass migration, whose current levels are simply not sane. <laughs> Reform is possible, and it will happen. But first, conservatives must recognize the condition. So Brexit must be a revolution in the true Burkean sense, to revolve, to restore the good that has been lost. We have restored our sovereignty. We must now restore our democracy. The belief has settled on conservatives that they are trapped in some kind of sterile duel between Heathite paternalism or some kind of dislocated libertarianism. But there is an ancient conservative tradition and one that we have ignored for too long. It will now be the job of conservatives to be a light in dark places if other lights go out. Because Britain too has renewed itself before. In his reflections on the revolution in France, Burke defended his tradition against upheaval and destruction in his time. He followed Sir John Fortescue, who compared England where the king was bound by law and part of a body politic with the evil things of France. There, the king's will was law and people lived in great poverty despite the land's abundance. Now is our turn to return to our tradition and we shall. I see national conservatism as the route to the restoration of our democracy. Therefore, despite our opponents' claims, it is surely the opposite of authoritarianism.
So there is no surer way to defend our freedoms than by renewing our conservatism. Thank you very much.